We're now going to have a look at something cool which is fairly unique to PEST and that is architecture testing. And so with architecture testing, you're not actually testing the functionality of your code. You're more testing that you're adhering to certain rules and standards. So here's the documentation. Let's have a quick look at what it says here, because this will probably explain it just as well, if not better than what I will. Architecture testing enables you to specify expectations that test whether your application adheres to a set of architectural rules, helping you maintain a clean and sustainable code base. The expectations are determined by either their relative namespaces, fully qualified namespaces, or function names. And so what these do is they'll check if, for example, you're implementing a specific interface, if particular objects in a or particular classes in a certain namespace need to implement particular interfaces. It'll also test other things such as you're not leaving uh, bits of code lying around, such as you might see little die and dumps, which I leave all the time, really bad habit, and I always forget to clean them out. So we'll also throw in some of that and just a bunch of other stuff. As you can see here, there's a lot of different expectations and they're all really, really useful. It's almost like they've read my mind when they've written this stuff. So let's go over to our code and we'll start a new test. We're going to create a dedicated test uh, and we'll just call it architecture test. So inside of tests we have feature and we have unit. It fits under neither of those categories is its own category and that is architecture. And so let's go and create a new folder called architecture. Inside there we shall create a new PHP file and we will call this architecture test. Okay, and then let's start to try some of these out. So we're using the same syntax, we're using the test functions. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is the one which I mentioned, that bad habit I have where I'm always leaving like little debugging, traces of debugging uh, lying around. And so we'll just call this test debugs are removed. And I don't need to uh, put a closure on here, I can just go straight to the expectation and here I'm just going to paste in some of my favorites. So we're saying expect dd dump or var dump. And we're just going to say not to be used. And so we have to use the not word. And then we'll say to be used. That's the one. Let's go and run the tests. Vendor bin pest. They all pass. But let's actually go and see if we can make these fail. So I'm just going into the source folder in the command or where else can I do this? I'll just drop it in a book where we're setting the ID, which means other tests will fail. So this isn't ideal. If we go and run it now. Okay, so it's got to the architecture tests first. I'm presuming it's done this by alphabetical order. And here it's saying fail, debugs are removed. And then obviously the uh, dump is dumped out there. So we know that that test has worked and we know that if we leave any of these little nasties lying around that they will get picked up by our architecture testing which is really really cool. Let's go and do another one just so I can show you some of the things you have available to us. Let's look for an interface. Here's one command interface. So we know that all of our commands are going to need to implement this command interface. And so what we will do is we will write a test to make sure that that is in fact true. So we'll go back to the architecture test and here we're going to say command interface is implemented. And so here we're going to use a namespace. The namespace was app command. So we're saying everything in the app command namespace must implement the command interface. So test command interface is implemented. We'll say where it should be. Command interface is implemented where it should be. Expect app command. So anything in the app command namespace to implement the command interface. Let's go and run the tests. And we have a passing test. Let's actually go and we shall delete these lines here where our migrate command is implementing the command interface and we will run the tests again. We have a failure and we can see that that failure is here. We are failing a architecture test. A 
and it said expecting source command migrate to implement the command interface. So you can see this is really cool. You know, these are all things which I have been guilty of uh, missing out loads of times. Let's do another one. If I remember rightly, our entities are implementing the JSON serializable. So this should be an easy one. If you want to work ahead and have a go at this, you've just seen how I actually do this. Do the same thing for anything in the app entity namespace. Okay, so here is how it's done. In fact, I could actually copy this and just uh, update it. Okay, so let's go and run the tests again. All passing. And you'll notice that I always like to do like a double check or a lot of the time I like to do a double check just to make sure that things aren't passing by accident because that's something which you'll see so many times. Okay, so we're getting a load of failures there and they are all for, well actually we're getting different kinds of failures because we're meant to be serializing these objects. So uh, you'll get failures for those, but we should get our architecture failures near the top somewhere. Here we go. So expecting entity author to implement JSON serializable. And also because we're not implementing JSON serializable, some of the other tests fail as well because they need to be serialized as part of that test. So if we put that back in there, then all of these things should now pass. And you'll see that a lot with testing. Sometimes you'll see um, lots of little tests failing, but it might just take one thing to fix them all as we've done here. Another thing you can do is you can test that certain classes have the correct suffix. What do I mean by that? I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. So if we go to our control here, we're saying all of our control classes, we want them to have the suffix controller. And so that is exactly what I mean. So we will test it on the books controller, or we'll test it on controllers in the controller namespace. So expect app controller because we're looking in that namespace and I think it's to have suffix. To have suffix, that is indeed correct. Controller. Okay, so let's go and run the tests. Okay, 18 passes. Let's scroll up and look for our architecture test. I think it should be at the stop here. And so, so far we have debugs are removed. Command interfaces is implemented where it should be. JSON serializable is implemented where it should be. Controllers have controller suffix. So far, so good. Let's do one more. And this last one is actually going to break a lot of things because I've decided that I'd like my entire application to have strictness to use strict types everywhere. And you'll notice that I haven't declared strict types anywhere. So I'm expecting a big explosion when we run this and probably a few things that we might need to fix. But I think it's a good idea to uh, give this a go. So we're saying expect app because that is our top level namespace. And then we're going to say to use strict types. That's what I'm looking for. And so like I say, when I run this now, I'm expecting a lot of explosions. Okay, so we're getting one failure, but I think we're going to need to go through these one by one because it will get to the first one and fail. Okay, so the first one is source database connection. So let's go and have a look in there. And all I'm doing is just adding this to the top of the file, declare strict types equals one, and then just run the tests again. It should move on to another one. And so this time it's saying expecting source database, database to use strict types. And so in the database file, I'm going to do the same thing. And so you've seen the pattern here. So I'm probably just going to run through all of the files and fix them until I get to anything which actually requires a code change. Okay, so source database migration interface. So like I say, I'm going to go through these one by one. I'm going to add strict types. And then if I get to any points where I actually need to change any of the code, we'll stop and have a look at that. So I've come to one here, which looks like it's going to require a code change. So I'll run the tests again. We're getting five failures. Here's what I'm seeing. Book repository test, book set ID, argument number one must be of type null or int string given. 
So we've seen a similar thing for all these failures. Actually, uh, argument number one, set ID must be int or null. Again, set ID. So what's actually going on here? And what is happening is when we are using the book mapper, now that we've said strict types, there's a casting which was happening here when we were passing the ID. Basically, what we're getting back from this last insert ID is a string. However, it is being cast to an integer because PHP is figuring that out and casting it for us. But now that we're using strict types, it isn't doing that. And so what we're going to do here is do our own casting. So we're going to say ID equals int and we shall cast that to an integer and we'll just run the tests again we're not going to guess what's going to happen I'm just going to let the tests tell us okay so now we're down to one failure and we're back to our uh, architecture failures so it's saying book repository should use strict type so i'll start running through these again and I get to a point where a similar thing happens that is in author mapper so i've added strict types to author mapper and then you'll see we're getting the exact same problem here. Author set ID, set ID argument one must be of type int. So we're getting a string in author mapper as well. So here where we're doing the last insert ID, again, just gonna typecast that to an integer and then run the tests again. And hopefully we should move on to our next architecture failure. Run the tests, back to one failing test. And indeed, it is an architecture uh, test fail and book needs to use strict types. Now, I've just added declare strict types to my router. And so I think this means that this is going to break things because when the integer, the actual identifier for the book gets passed into the handler, if we look at our books controller, it's expecting an integer, but we're actually now going to get a string. We ain't, we ain't going to get that automatic casting which we were originally getting, but we'll not guess, we will run it anyway. So routing, declare strict types. Let's go and run the tests. We now get two failures and we'll see here we go books control show argument number one must be of type int string given let's see what the other one is yeah we're just getting the same thing twice there so we need to go and solve this problem it's not straightforward or it might be a little ugly i can use a union type i can say this could be an integer or a string which isn't great because the whole point of having of PHP now becoming a typed language is not to have this kind of loose typing I'm not a huge fan of uh, union types but they exist so we can use them for the time being and just for the sake of this is an architecture testing lesson we're going to throw it in there and we'll get our test passing and I'll maybe think about some kind of refactoring at a later time on how we can handle this a bit differently and if I do that I'll of course add it to the course hope you're okay with that let's go and run the tests again we're now getting two failures still book repository find by ID Okay, so of course that is expecting an integer for the ID, but we are now passing a string. So what we'll do is we'll actually just cast that in place there. And then let's go and run this again. Okay, we're now getting 19 passes. So that means that our entire source code is all covered by strict types. Let's just go and pick something at random. So I'm going to pick maybe book entity yep we have strict types there i'll pick another one at random uh, repository book mapper okay and so we're using strict types and so there we've been able to use architecture testing in order to ensure that our code follows rules and standards and also to enable us to check that we are using strict types throughout our code. There's loads of things you can do with architecture testing. Check out the documentation. One thing I will say is that people have asked me while I've been making this course, is it worth using PEST? Why would I use PEST when it's built on PHP unit and you can just do the same thing? And I think it's these little touches, things like the architecture testing those little things which become really useful 
which don't actually already exist elsewhere because once you get used to using things like these especially someone like myself who i can be a bit sloppy and miss using strict types quite a lot as you've probably seen and also i leave little um, debugging things in there all the time stuff like this once i get used to using it i'd really miss it once i move on or when i go to a code base where i'm not using pest and so i think it's those kind of things which will swing it for people but try it out yourself you know see how you get on with it see what it's like once you've used pest going back to a code base where you don't use pest and i think you'll find there's quite a few things which you'll start to miss